Hey everybody, my name is Jorge Peruzzi and I'm here to help you get set up with your IBM blockchain starter plan and your node app. So this video is going to be based on this read or this code pattern. Um, so I have this create a car auction um, with Hyperledger Fabric Node SDK and IBM blockchain starter plan. So I already have a video that kind of walks through the logic. Um, so this is this one. Um, and Hi, basically you can see all the logic here. Um, you'll see all the code and me actually invoking transactions on the network. Um, but what I really want to actually do um, is actually help you get set up so you can start with those transactions. So basically the first thing we have to do, um, so we have to create this blockchain service, which looks like this. So first things first, you should already have an IBM cloud account. So your IBM cloud account should look like this. You just click up the top. Um, this is my account. Um, but yours should look a little different, but you know, same sort of UI. There's, a, I have a video, if you don't know how to create an IBM Cloud account, I have a video for that too. I'll link it in the description. But now let's go ahead and create this blockchain resource. Uh, so we can go ahead and create resource um, and then just type in blockchain. Um, and then we can go ahead and, this is important, give it a name. Um, so I'll do blockchain YouTube tutorial. Uh, and then I click the starter membership plan and click create. Okay. So now our, we see our network is created. We can hit this launch button. So again, this is our um, welcome screen. I'm just going to change this name really quick. So I remember which network is which. Um, you don't really have to do that. So now I'm in my network, everything is looking good. So the thing we have to do now is we actually have to connect our, um, our basically our cloud credentials to our node app. So the way to do this is with this connection profile. So we'll go ahead and click this, click on download. While it's waiting for download, I'm gonna actually open it up as raw JSON as well, just for, to, ha to have easy access. So I have that there, so I have my credentials. Then with my credentials, um, let me see here. Okay, so in my finder, in my downloads, I should have this creds. Um, I'll rename it to be creds.json and then I'll put it into my work directory. And then now I'll go ahead and, so I, you, I have my credentials here. Um, and now I wanna actually clone the repo. So we'll go to our network and we'll hit the clone and we'll copy this. And then in your favorite place um, to develop, um, for me, it'll be the tutorials and then I'll do git clone. So this is where I'm starting my network. It's gonna take a little bit of time to download since there's some um, picture. Okay, so now that we've finished uh, cloning into our directory, we can go ahead and go into it. Um, and I'll go ahead and put this uh, credentials right into my directory. Great, so the first thing we need to do is open this enroll admin file. So in this enroll admin file, um, we'll see this, um, this line right here where we create a new instance of the Fabric Certificate Authority. So now what we need to do is we need to get the enroll ID, the enroll secret, the certificate authority URL with the port, and then the certificate authority name. So this is all not too bad. Um, so if we go into our actual um, connection profile, everything that we need is in is within this certificate authority um, uh, line or this JSON object basically. So we can start with the easiest one first. The enroll ID is just admin and the enroll secret is this right there. So enroll ID is just admin. Um, enroll secret is just this. Uh, now this one is a little trickier. So this is just everything after the HTTPS. So everything after the slash slash is what we'll need for the URL for the certificate authority. 
And then lastly, the actual name is just org1 certificate authority. Okay, and the last thing here is just we need that enroll secret again. Um, we can go ahead and copy and paste. Okay, that's not too bad. Next, we need this same line to go with our actual uh, register user here. Um, so in register user, we have the same line. Um, so we'll go ahead and fill that in with the same thing. And we should be pretty much good to go. Um, next, we'll actually have to run npm install to make sure we have all the right dependencies. Um, so we'll run that now. While it's running, let's go ahead and uh, instantiate our chain code. So um, in, our, in our actual cloud service, we'll go ahead and go to install code on the left. Then uh, we can go ahead and click install chain code. Um, we can call it car auction. The version will just be one and the Chain code type is node, of course, and then we should have our latest um, car auction and our package.json. That's very important. You need both of those files. So now we're installing the chain code. Um, it should take a second here. We see that it's installed. Now we actually have to instantiate it. So let's go ahead and click instantiate. We have the default channel, which is fine. And we click node, click next, and then we just say, uh, I'm going to zoom it out a little bit. Uh, simple policy is fine and we click submit. Okay, so uh, this might have taken a little bit of time, but once it's instantiated, you should see that it's you can't instantiate anymore. And now if we go into our channel, uh, we should see our actual chain code should have or our channel should have some blocks on it. That is just simply because when we instantiate, it calls init ledger, which is uh, the init function, to actually start uh, the chain code on the peer. So that's what happened in the last uh, 30 seconds or so when we were instantiating the chain code. And we can view the details, right? Um, that's this. So um, let's go ahead and see if everything is working. So we've called npm install. Um, everything should be fine there. Now in our invoke, we should be able to go ahead and call a knit ledger. So we can do something like note invoke.js. Oh, okay. So if you see here, error failed to get user one, of course, um, we forgot to do that. So the first thing we need to do is a node enroll admin. Okay. Um, so in our enroll admin, it says org one CA is not defined. Ah, so the problem is we didn't put in quotes. Classic mistake there, just solid. Okay, um, so that looks good to me. We enrolled the user admin. Um, we got our certificate from the certificate authority, and now we can register our user. So of course that's going to Oh, again, same thing. We forgot the quotes. Okay, so yeah, same thing here. We're going to uh, log in as admin and then register this user one. Cool. Um, so we see this has successfully registered the member and now if we invoke it, it should work now. Great. Um, so we see everything went through. What I basically did is just call this init ledger function. So now we should see that uh, this new block being added should be the fifth block. Nice. Um, cool. So that's more or less it. We can go into the details. We see all of this. So in my previous video, I explained uh, you know how this init ledger works. Um, but basically, it's it's uh, or this invoke. So in this invoke file, we're actually submitting requests to our chain code. We say, we give our chain code ID, we give our function. And of course, if we go into our chain code directory, we see this init uh, ledger here, right? So we're basically in our invoke, we're of course calling this invoke.js here. And then in our, yes, we're calling, so in invoke, we're calling uh, init ledger. And then in our car auction, we have all of our, of course, init ledger. 
We have query, which I've shown in the previous video, create vehicle, create vehicle listing, create member, make offer, which I showed a bunch. And then the last thing is this close bidding. So awesome. So hopefully from this video, you learned how to enroll your uh, application using the connection profile. Again, remember that, uh, of course, this needs quotes. And uh, again, you need this uh, connection profile downloaded and then you need to put it in your actual uh, root directory because our invoke uh, requires this creds.json which we have just downloaded and imported okay so uh, thanks again i hope you hopefully you learned something um, again you can ask me any questions comments um, i'm here for you to help you so thanks again for watching horia peruzzi you out